Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to integrate exponential functions with a base other than e. And so recall that the derivative of an exponential function with a base other than e, such as a, where a is a real positive number, that is equal to that exponential function, a to the power of x, times the natural log of a. Right, so if we had f of x is equal to 3 to the power of x, then we know that the derivative f prime of x is equal to 3 to the power of x times the natural log of that base, 3. Right, so we know how to take the derivative of an exponential function like 3 to the power of x, but how would we find the integral of an exponential function like 3 to the power of x? Right, what would this be equal to? Well, if we go back to our function here, f of x equals 3 to the power of x, notice that the derivative f prime of x contains that original function within it, right? 3 to the power of x is being multiplied by the natural log of 3, and 3 to the power of x is the original function that we took the derivative of. And so remember that when you take the integral of a function, you are looking for a function whose derivative is that function in the integral, right? You are trying to find the antiderivative. And so if we're trying to find a function whose derivative is 3 to the power of x, we can consider a function that's very close to this function right here because its derivative has that original function within it. And so maybe that doesn't make sense, but consider this function. Consider g of x is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of 3 times 3 to the power of x, right? We just have this constant multiple of 1 divided by the natural log of 3 times 3 to the power of x. And so if we take the derivative of this, we'll have g prime of x is equal to that constant multiple, 1 divided by the natural log of 3 times the derivative of 3 to the power of x. And that is equal to 3 to the power of x times the natural log of 3. But notice that this natural log of 3 will cancel out with this natural log of 3. Right, if you divide the natural log of 3 by itself, that's just equal to 1, and so this can be canceled out, and our derivative will be equal to just 3 to the power of x. And so, remember what I said earlier, when we are integrating a function, we are trying to find a function whose derivative is that function in the integral. And so we just took the derivative of a function whose derivative is 3 to the power of x. And so the integral of 3 to the power of x is going to be equal to this function plus c, right? So we'll have 1 divided by the natural log of 3 times 3 to the power of x plus c. This is the antiderivative of 3 to the power of x. And so as a result of this demonstration that I just did here, we can then create a derivative rule for exponential functions like 3 to the power of x, right? So more generally, we will have that the integral of a to the power of x dx is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of a times a to the power of x plus c. And so this is the integration rule for an exponential function that has a base that is not e. All right, and so now that we have our integration rule, let's look at some examples of using this rule to integrate some other functions. All right, so here we have the integral of 5 to the power of x dx. And so if we want to integrate this function, we are going to need to use that rule that we just derived. And so for this integral, a is equal to 5. And so by using this rule, we will have that this is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of the base, which is 5 times the original function, 5 to the power of x plus c. And so then if we wanted to, we could simplify this and have that it's equal to 5 to the power of x divided by the natural log of 5 plus c. And that will be the solution to this integral or the antiderivative of this function. Okay, let's look at another example. Next, we have the integral of seven to the power of x plus one dx. And in order to integrate this function, we're going to need to use a variation of the integral rule that can be used when u substitution is required to integrate a function. And so here we have that variation. We have that the integral of a to the power of u du is equal to one divided by the natural log of a times the original function a to the power of u plus c. And so in order to determine when to use u substitution or when you're going to need to use this variation of the integration rule, you just want to look at your function and if the exponent is a function other than just x, then you're probably going to want to set that exponent equal to u. Not all the time, but in most cases, that's going to be what you want to set equal to u, and that will allow you to use u substitution, which will allow you to integrate your function. 
And so if we do that in this scenario, we will have u is equal to x plus 1, and then we will take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to just 1, because the derivative of x to the power of 1 is just equal to its coefficient, which in this case is 1. And the derivative of this one is 0, because 1 is a constant, and the derivative of any constant is 0. And so if we solve for du here by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to dx. And so now whatever du is equal to, we want to be able to find that in our integral somewhere so that it can be replaced by du. And so if we look for dx, it's right here. And so we're good to go. We can rewrite this integral in terms of u and then integrate. And so if we do that, we'll have that this is equal to the integral of 7 to the power of u du. Right, we replaced x plus 1 with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced dx with du because that's what we set that equal to. And so now we can use this integration rule where a is equal to 7. And so we will have that this is equal to 1 divided by the natural log of the base 7 times the original function 7 to the power of u plus c. Okay, and so we're almost done. Now we just have to replace u with what we set it equal to. And so we'll do that over here. We'll have that this is equal to 7 to the power of u, which we set is x plus 1. So we'll have x plus 1 divided by the natural log of 7 plus c. Okay, and so this is the solution to this integral or the antiderivative of this function. All right, so here we have the integral of x times 2 to the power of x squared dx. And so how do you think we're going to solve this integral? Well, what we're going to want to do is use u substitution because I see that we have 2 to the power of some function that is not just x, right? So I'm probably going to want to set u equal to x squared. But remember, when you use u substitution, whatever you set equal to u, you should also see that function's derivative somewhere within the integral. And so remember, when you take the derivative of x squared using the power rule, the exponent is going to decrease by 1. And so we want to make sure that there is a function of x to the first power somewhere within this integral. And thankfully, I see that right here. We have x to the first power. And so setting u equal to x squared is a good choice. And so we'll set that equal to u. We'll have u is equal to x squared. And then we'll take the derivative of it. So we'll have du dx is equal to 2x, right? We multiply the exponent down and then subtract 1 from the exponent. So we have 2 times x to the first power. And then we want to solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx. And so we'll have that du is equal to 2x dx. And so now we want to make sure that whatever du is equal to, that can be found somewhere within our integral. Now, we don't have an exact match here, right? We have that du is equal to 2x dx, but I only see x dx in our integral here, right? This 2 doesn't count because this 2 is being raised to an exponent. It's not just 2. And so since I don't see this 2 in the integral, I'm going to divide that over so that du is divided by 2. And so we'll have du divided by 2 is equal to x times dx, right? We just divided both sides by 2. And so now we have a du term that is equal to something that we can find in our integral, and that can be replaced by du divided by 2. And so now we can do that. We can rewrite this integral in terms of u, and we'll have that this is equal to the integral of 2 to the power of u times du divided by 2, right? So we replaced x squared with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced x times dx with du divided by 2 because that is what that is equal to. And so now if I pull this 1 half out to the front, we'll have that this is equal to 1 half times the integral of 2 to the power of u du. And so now we can use our integration rule for an exponential function with a base other than e. And so this will be equal to 1 half times 1 divided by the natural log of the base 2, right? We have a base of 2 and that will be multiplied by that original function, 2 to the power of u plus c. And so now all that's left to do is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is x squared. And so if we clean up our work here, we can say that this is equal to 2 to the power of x squared divided by 2 times the natural log of 2 plus c. And this will be our final answer or the solution to this integral. Up next, we have the integral of 4 to the power of sine x times cosine x dx. 
And so in order to integrate this function, the first thing that you should notice is that we have an exponent of a function other than x. And so we're most likely going to want to set that function equal to u and use u substitution for this integral. And so remember, if we're going to do that, that function sine x that we're going to set equal to u, the derivative of that function also needs to be found within our integral. And so thankfully, we know that the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and cosine x can be found right here. And so it's going to be a good idea to set u equal to sine x. And so if we do that, we'll have that u is equal to sine x, and then we'll take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to cosine x, right? That is the derivative of sine. And then we'll solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx. And so we'll have du is equal to cosine x dx. And then we should make sure that whatever is on this side of this equation, right? Whatever du is equal to, that should be found within our integral. And so just like we planned, cosine x dx can be found right here. And so we can rewrite this integral to be in terms of u. And so we will have that this is equal to the integral of four to the power of u times du, right? We replaced sine x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And then we replaced cosine x dx with du right here. Okay, and so then we can use our integration rule for an exponential function with a base other than e. And this will be equal to one divided by the natural log of that base, which is four times the original function, four to the power of u plus c. And so now, if we just replace u with what we set it equal to, which is sine x, we will have our final answer that this is equal to 4 to the power of sine x divided by the natural log of 4 plus c. And that is the final answer or the solution to this integral. Okay, so here we have the integral of x to the power of 6 plus 6 to the power of negative x times dx. And so for this integral, we have two different types of functions here. We have a variable of x to the power of six, and then we have an exponential function where we have six to the power of negative x. And so each of these terms is going to require a different integration rule, right? This term is going to require the power rule of integration. That's one of the first integration rules that you learn. But this term of six to the power of negative x is going to require the new rule that we learned in this lesson for exponential functions with a base other than e. And so we need to keep that in mind when we go to integrate. But first, notice that the power here of this exponential function is a function other than just x, right? It's negative x. And so we're going to want to use u substitution to integrate this specific term. And so in order to keep things neat and not to get too confused, I'm going to split up these two terms into two separate integrals. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral of x to the sixth power dx plus the integral of six to the negative x power dx. And so now we can use u substitution for this term in this separate integral and not interfere with this term over here. All right, and so then let's use u substitution for this integral. Let's set u equal to that exponent. So we will have that u is equal to negative x, and then we'll take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to negative one. And then let's solve for du. We will have that du is equal to negative dx, right? We just multiplied both sides by dx. And then remember, whatever du is equal to needs to be found in our integral. However, I don't see a negative dx in the integral here. I just see a positive dx. And so I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by negative one. And so then we'll have negative du is equal to positive dx. And we'll now be able to replace dx in this integral with negative du. Okay, and so if we rewrite this integral to be in terms of u, we will have that this is equal to the integral of x to the sixth power dx plus the integral of six to the power of u times negative du. Now we can pull this negative out to the front of the integral and we'll just have this integral minus this integral. And so if I rewrite this du to just be a positive du and then rewrite this positive sign to be a subtraction sign, we will now be ready to integrate each of these functions. Okay, and so if I clean up my work here, we will start by integrating this function right here. So using the power rule, this will be equal to x to the power of six plus one divided by that new power of six plus one. And then we will subtract the integral of six to the power of u du, which if we use that new rule we learned, 
we will have 1 divided by the natural log of that base, which is 6, times the original function, 6 to the power of u. So we'll have 6 to the power of u plus c. Okay, and so then if we simplify, remembering to change u back to what we set it equal to, this integral will be equal to x to the power of 7 divided by 7 minus 6 to the power of negative x divided by the natural log of 6 plus c. And that would be an acceptable answer for the integral of this function. However, we can simplify in one more way. We can move this 6 to the negative x power to the denominator, and that will make this exponent positive. And so let's do that. We'll have that this is equal to x to the power of 7 divided by 7 minus 1 divided by the natural log of 6 times 6 to the positive x power. And then don't forget your plus c. Okay, and so that is the final answer or the solution to this integral. Okay, so here we have the integral of 3x squared times the square root of 8 to the power of 2x cubed dx. So this seems like a fairly complicated integral to integrate, but we can actually make some simplifications to this before we actually need to use any integration rules. Because in its current state, it's pretty complicated, and it's not so clear what we wanna set equal to u, because we're probably going to need to use u substitution here, because I see we have an exponential function where the power is not just x. But first, notice that we can rewrite this square root to be this exponential function to the one half power. And so if we do that, we'll have that this is equal to the integral of three x squared times eight to the power of two x cubed to the power of one half dx. And so now remember, when you have a value to some power and that is raised to a power, you can simplify that by multiplying the powers together. And so we will have that this is equal to the integral of three x squared times eight to the power of two x cubed times one half. And then don't forget dx. And so this two and this one half will actually cancel out because two times one half is just one. And so then this will be equal to the integral of three x squared times eight to the power of x cubed dx. Okay, and so now by doing that, we have now simplified our integral into a state of which now it should be a little bit more obvious of how we're going to use u substitution to integrate it, right? When you wanna use u substitution, you want to find a function and its derivative. And in this case, the power of eight is x cubed. And we know that the derivative of a cubed function is going to be an x squared function, right? Because the exponent will decrease by one. And so I see that x squared function right here. And so we will be able to use u substitution. And so if we clean up our work here, let's set u equal to x cubed, and then we'll take the derivative of that. So du dx is equal to three x squared, right? You multiply the exponent down, and then you subtract one from the exponent. And so the exponent is three minus one, which is equal to two. All right, and so now let's multiply both sides by dx so that we can solve for du. And so we'll have that du is equal to three x squared dx. And then we wanna look within our integral to see if what du is equal to can be found within the integral. And so we have that du is equal to three x squared dx. And if we look in our integral, we have three x squared dx. And so we're good. We can replace those with du. And so this will be equal to the integral of eight to the power of u du, right? We replaced x cubed with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced three x squared dx with du because that's what that is equal to. And so now we can use our integration rule and we'll have that this is equal to one divided by the natural log of the base, which is eight times that function, eight to the power of u plus c. And then all we have to do is replace u with what we set it equal to, which is x cubed. And so our final answer is that this is equal to eight to the power of x cubed divided by the natural log of eight plus c. And that is the antiderivative of our function or the solution to this integral. Okay, and so that is all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.